Did you press play? Or we're going live? I didn't know if you had already pressed play. It should be recording. Oh, is it already recording? <laughs> okay, we we're are. Live. Oh yeah, there we are. So you know, it takes it okay, takes uh, are... takes a few minutes to you know before Streamyard throws us to the wolves over here. All right, so we are live today. We're live with a special interview. We're, we're live with one of our clients, all right? Scott Holiday. he's got the coolest name in the world, all right? And we're gonna break down Scott's sales process and we're gonna show you how Scott quite literally went from making like 10 grand a month, 12 grand a month, already doing well, making six figures, and now how he's more than doubled his commissions and he's selling the exact same thing as he was before. Now, how long have you been here with us? Maybe three or four months, four months? I don't even remember. No, a little bit longer, Jeremy. I went through steps. I've been with you guys overall about, man, almost nine, nine months, I would say now, because I, I took steps, right? You start like our, to, three, okay, so you start in like our NEPQ 3.0 program, which is where most people start. That's probably- Yeah, 3.0. Yeah, so yeah. you start MPQ 3.0, and then you got into like the more advanced inner circle, maybe three, four months, five months. Yes, like that. yes, okay. yes. That's maybe right. a boot camp or two in between. Yeah, that's right. So yeah. we're going to break down his sales process. I'm going to ask him some questions where you can take what he's telling you and apply it to your industry to help you sell more starting today. All right. Now, if you're brand new to maybe our Facebook group, because we're going live in our Facebook group, Sales Revolution, LinkedIn, our YouTube account. Facebook business page, got about 100,000 people on there. Facebook groups, got about, I don't know, 37, 38,000 of you running around in there. And my personal Facebook, all right? So if you're brand new to watching us, my name is Jeremy Miner. Okay, I'm the chairman and founder of Seventh Level. We are a company, an organization that trains salespeople exactly like you watching me and Scott right now, okay? So we train sales professionals like you. We train sales executives like you, sales management like you. We train entrepreneurs, business owners like you, coaches, consultants, doesn't matter. And we train you and your teams really how to transform the way you sell by learning specific skilled questions and techniques, get this, that actually work, that actually work with human behavior rather than work against it. That might be important for you to know. Now, those are known, like Scott knows, as neuro-emotional persuasion questions. That stands for NEPQ. Now, it's not just the questions but it's with the right tonality. Is it more of a curious tone in certain parts of your conversation? Is it more of a skeptical tone? Is it more an, a concern tone for them? Okay, so we teach you all the differences, which helps you eliminate sales resistance from your prospect. Who wants to eliminate sales resistance? Type me in the chat if that's you. Triggers your prospects to want to engage and actually open up to you and get them to pull you in. Right, Scott? All right, Scott, now you're, where are you based out of? Uh, Toronto. One of the Canadians, eh? Yes, sir. <laughs> One of those Canadians over there, those crazy Canadians. I heard you guys were locked down forever. Now you're all free. It's back we're to free. The, the free Canada land, right? You're now free. You can go do whatever you want. So congratulations. Thank <laughs> well, you. well done. We, we, you know, we have a lot of our staff up in, in your area in Toronto and stuff that work virtually as well. And they're always telling me the crazy stories. I'm like, good Lord, what is going on up there? You know, crazy. <laughs> now, if you guys on here want to acquire the same skills that Scott has acquired that now has got him up to about 30 grand every single month in commissions. You want to acquire those type of skills, message me directly right now. Okay. So if you want to start making your first 10 grand a month in commissions with what you sell, if you want to start making 15, 20, 30 grand a month, plus every single month in your industry, message me directly right now. Now, if you can't figure out how to message me directly, because you're old like me and we don't know social media, in the comments, post hashtag NEPQ. Post hashtag NEPQ and either myself or one of my stunt doubles will message you back some different training options if you want to acquire those skills that Scott has and thousands of other clients. All right. Now, if you're on the live right now, I want you to go down to the bottom. So if you're on the live right now, I want you to go down to the bottom of your phone and I want you to post hashtag live. So if you're on the live, I want you to post hashtag live. And if you're on the replay, I want you to post hashtag replay. So I better see a bunch of hashtag lives. I'm not going to interview Scott and have him spill the beans on what we've trained him. If I don't see a ton of hashtag lives and a ton of hashtag replays. All right. Now, uh, Nathan, we got somebody, uh, somebody on, our, on the social media team 
maybe Chris, uh, Val, Quincy, Jordan. Uh, let's give the guys on YouTube the Facebook join link because we can't message them back on YouTube and he's asking for information. So let's get him to join the Facebook group so we can then message him in there. All right. Now, also, I want you to grab your phone and I want you to smash the heart button. Thanks for doing that, Joy. Thanks, David. Thanks, Curran. Thanks, Tammy. Thanks, Joe. Thanks. Yeah, Joe. Thanks for doing that. Steve, thanks for doing that. Now, I want you to smash the heart button. I want you to smash the heart button, smash the like button. So smash the heart button, smash the like button. I better see hundreds of smashed hearts and hundreds of smashed likes. Otherwise, I'm going to go out here and golf. It's a nice 70 degrees out here in Scottsdale. I could go golfing right now. So smash the heart button, smash the like button. All right, Scott, nobody cares about me. They only care about you and themselves. All right, so walk us through. When did you, what do you sell now? Just walk us through who you work for, what you actually sell. Yeah, I work for an amazing company. Uh, we help realtors uh, call it the listings lab. Okay. Uh, the listings lab based out okay. of, uh, yeah. So what, like I've been there for about three years now. And what problems um, do you solve? Like, what do you solve? Cause you sell to real estate agents primarily. Yeah. What do you help them do? Many, many areas. We focus on their branding, their content overall, their systems in their business, okay. them to be able to scale, have that scalability and you not train these family. real estate agents how to scale, which obviously helps them get more listings, how to brand themselves as like the go-to real estate agent in their neck of the woods. hundred percent. Right? Kind of like Ryan Sirhan, one of our clients does kind of the same type of thing, but you do it better, right? Is what yes, saying? that is right. <laughs> okay. All right. We won't, we won't, we won't, well, I'll we won't be quiet tell. there, but yeah, we do. Won't tell Ryan that. All right. Perfect. All right. Now, Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, so walk us through, because I don't think this was your first sales game. When did you get in, involved in sales? How many years? Oh, I've, I, yeah, I've been in sales for, oh my gosh, um, about 20 years. You're dating me now, but about, yeah, I guess I guess around 20 years. You know, 20 I started, years. started fitness sales. Um, okay. And, you know, through the years, I've, I've done many things uh, to that capacity in sales, started my own business. You, uh, like when you first started in sales, like how did you really... Who did you learn from? What, how did you start to sell? Like, what was your sales techniques like when you first started before you got involved in any PQ? You know, it's funny for me. I mean, other than company protocols, you work for a company and you get generic type of sales this structure. You know that, right? And um, I guess my very first sales position, I actually learned um, from my um, from my brother in law, and he had a bit of a different technique. This was with my own business, but. Throughout the years, yeah, it's always been like a more like a generic type of, okay. say, I think like with everyone else, right? Yeah, just like a kind of traditional selling, you know, yeah. questions and then kind of go into your pitch and your solution. Yeah, more yeah. more product pushing and things like that, I think. Yeah, now you got, hey, you, you did well at it. You're, you're making 10, 12, even 15 grand a month in commissions. So, I mean, with a lot of salespeople that are making 10 grand a month, 12 grand a month, they think they know everything about selling. They've got the yeah. biggest ego in the world. They don't think they could learn anything else. They know everything. What caused Scott to be like, you know what? Like maybe, maybe there's more that I need to learn that's going to help me get to 30,000 plus a month in commissions. What was that? Like what caused you to like even think you could sell more? Like if you learn more skills, you could sell more, make more money. What happened in your brain? Yeah, I think for me, I, I, I was just lucky where I came and really in like, I think a lot of salespeople don't really understand to what level you can like and that what you do is actually a skill set. Right. right? What, and, what do you mean by that? Why do you think they don't understand that? Because I mean, I, I mean, I think I think, you know, most people when they get to a certain it's like what you said you know you you got people that are doing six figures they think that you know they they know it all there's there's no other room to grow but you know a lot of times are they doing the same thing over and over and over and over again for x amount of years right um i think coming across and just really being exposed to any pq yeah. for me was an eye opener it was more of a what way was it an eye opener just, I, it's, it's like, yeah, I, I remember, I remember going through the entire process and it just was, I had that aha moment, like, man, there's just so much I don't know that I think I know, <laughs> you know, there's, and it, there really was. And I think, um, going through what I've went through, I kind of like the, the pattern that I went through with you guys. Cause I started at a certain level and kind of, you know, moved up from there. That's typically um, what we do, like our average yeah. 
our average person, our average client, if they're, you know, if they're, if they're an individual salesperson, it's different if they own the company, because then, you know, we have B2B deals that, that we work out with their business owner for all their salespeople. But if they're an individual salesperson, like they just wants to sell more in whatever industry, yeah. the average client usually starts in like our any advanced NPQ 3.0. And I think that's where yeah. you start with our 3.0 program. That's when you right. went through that virtual training course, because it's not just a virtual training which is important because that's like a 33 hour course, but it's also the group training week on week out where you learn more of the advanced skills, the advanced tonality, the, the verbal pausing, uh, the advanced objection prevention skills that we don't even teach in the platform. What, what was it uh, like, what specific parts of 3.0 do you feel like really helped you the most, like double your commissions? Role playing hundred percent hands down. It's one thing learning the foundation, but mm -hmm. uh, we all know there's different levels to any PQ. Yeah. Yeah. Right? right. And it's like, you, you know, you always say to people that you have to go through that module process yeah. like many, many times, which, which I did. But when you start actually working on the process in more of a practical way, it's, uh, for me, it was a game changer. Yeah. It was an absolute game changer. So what part of the role playing do you feel like helped you the most? Like what aspects? I, I think, honestly, I think, uh, just being around other, um, sales professionals and you know, the high level coaching, obviously, Yeah, you know, and that's where you kind of like, it's almost like, you know, when I got into three, 3.0, I just put my pride aside. Like yeah. I didn't come to this thinking, okay, you know, I'm like, what are they going to teach me? And I yeah. remember going through the process thinking, yeah. holy geez. Yeah, where did you start going like month one month two like what did you start what type of results did you start seeing like and we don't even need to talk about financial because yeah, yeah. i know yeah. I you more than double your income yeah. like how did your prospects start to treat you differently how did they react to you differently than maybe they were with the old way you used to sell yeah i think again it's i think it's phases right like i think once you have the right foundation what what really hit me with any pq and what i almost saw like instant results yeah. was my position of questioning mm. where i could really like at the end of the day and i've always been focused that way with sales and you yeah. know customers and stuff like that yeah yeah but when you have that foundation where you can really be very clear on the direction that you're going, but also really engage in that conversation, yeah, that's when things change straight away. Yeah, because when you're able to trigger the prospect you're talking to, because do you do you get on Zoom with them or are you mainly on yeah, the Zoom? Yeah, Zoom, usually Zoom calls, okay, yeah. So you're on Zoom calls with them. But the problem is, is like most prospects or most salespeople just ask what are we call surface level questions. The yeah. prospect stays surface level. And then at the end, you know what objection you're going to get. I want to think it over. I need to keep looking around. Let me talk with my spouse. I'll get back to you. I need to pray about it. It's a big decision. We don't yeah. have the money. So because they stay surface level with you, they never go below the surface. You never peel the layers back from the onion and they don't feel they don't really feel a gap from where right. they are compared to where they could be because our questioning skills are too surface level. So when right. you started to learn how to how to trigger them to actually, because you can't just go in and ask like real emotional questions without getting the prospect to want to answer them, right? If you force that onto them, they're just gonna be like, well, why are you asking me that? Or that seems really personal, right? So there's certain bridging statements and questions we ask that trigger the prospect to feel comfortable enough to want to actually engage in that type of conversation. And what, what did you notice your prospects were doing when you were starting to get them to go below the surface? It was, it was, it was a, a completely different engagement because now they are, like you said, they're opening up because I am not there to sell them. They pick up on that. When you have the right questioning in there, like I, when I am with a prospect, when I jump on a call and I'm very, first of all, I'm very passionate about what I do. Yeah. The company I work for, I'm very passionate about them. Yeah. So obviously that's important. Mm -hmm. But when you have the right foundation to really, like you said, go on a deeper level <sighs> and really walk someone through like, here is your problem. Yeah. You know, here, let, let's walk through this together. Yeah. I am fully disconnected from the outcome because yeah. I am so engaged in that person. I want to help that person. Yeah, they and, feel that you're concerned for them. And and when they feel that you're, it's not just by you saying like, oh, how, how are you doing today? And just being friendly with them. Being friends with somebody does not trigger a prospect 
to want to change their situation. Hundred percent. Heat that to everybody. Yeah. Trying to be friendly. Typically, now you don't need to be mean, but you need to be more matter of factly. Like you're there to help them find and solve problems that maybe they didn't realize they had before that conversation. And when the prospect feels that you're there to help them get what they said they wanted, they yeah. feel like you understand their unique situation, unique situation, more than any other salesperson they've ever met. Right. And when they feel that, it's over. They will gladly pay you way more money than any other person selling what you do because they feel like you're going to get them the best result because they feel like you understand their situation the most. See what I mean? Totally. And I think when you go through that process thoroughly and you're in control and you know where you're going, because this is their first time, you're yeah. the one in control. Yeah. You have to be very conscious of that. But when you go through that process, like I don't get, I'll be honest, I don't get a lot of objections. Why don't you? Because I, re I really feel I cover those with them through the process. And and what? And if I do get an objection, it's just it's it's really more so a concern. Yeah, it's like just a question or a concern. Now that's objection prevention. That's a really good subject because before because we teach a lot of objection prevention, like certain questions you ask in that conversation that actually prevent an objection from even happening in their mind, yeah. right? Because yeah. most objections, eighty percent of objections are actually triggered by you, the salesperson, and what you say and you don't ask. Yes. That trigger no gap in the conversation. So they feel uncertainty in their brain and they feel fear that you can even get them the result they said they wanted. What, how did you like part of the training? We obviously teach objection prevention. Maybe give mm -hmm. us an example of something that, that we taught you about objection prevention that has really helped eliminate some of the objections you used to get all the time. Um, many ways. I mean, probably, you know, I, I, I personally like, situation questions okay yeah. right? keeping it short and sweet and really understanding you know like what are they doing now yeah you know what what are they using specifically how long have they been doing that and what really got them involved in doing it that way i like that question because that really you know opens them up where they're walking through their oh yeah i've been doing this for 10 years that you, yeah. you know what i mean like so yeah. Yeah. So give, give us an example of a situation question, because obviously we, you know, we train a bunch of people in your industry as well. I'm assuming one of them is like, okay, can you, can you walk me through, you know, what you do to generate new leads and clients? Now? Yeah, like for that? sure. Like walk me through, like, like, like just walk me through your business right now. Like what, where, you know, where are you generating your business from? Walk me through that process. Yeah. And they you know, start, where, where are the, where, where are these people coming from? And just like, yeah. kind of, very it's and again it's not an emotional this is where yeah. you're just literally getting yeah. the facts well it's important because we we have to it's not just for us to know their situation but more importantly it's to help your prospect yes really mm -hmm. understand what their real situation is because i hate to tell everybody in here most of your prospects when you first start talking to them whether you believe it or not don't really understand what their real situation is they don't they don't, absolutely they never, they've never really thought about it like you think about it because you know the problems of everybody you talk to so you see it from like a a 10 mile radius right they're seeing it in their little shell you're seeing it from way up here now here's the difference if we tell them their situation and tell them their problems that's just going to go in one ear out the other cuz you're biased you're the salesperson they know that so by us asking even those starting of the situation questions it triggers them to get emotionally involved. Yeah. And when they get emotionally involved, even if, like you said, they have a concern because they've got so much emotion wrapped up in their problems and why they need to change, they become way more open for you helping them resolve that concern. Well, it's a whole different conversation at that point. And what, 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 how is it a different conversation for you than it used to be before an APQ? You're just, you're getting deeper to the core. You're getting deeper to the things that really matter to them. Cause at the end of the day, it's, it's about them and it's how they're doing things. And once you start going into certain scenarios where, you know, how is this having an impact on you? Right. I've been through myself, like NEPQ is very fascinating to me because especially when you get to things like consequences and stuff like that, yeah. yeah. being a sales professional and being in business a long time, I've been through those situations myself. Yeah. Like I've been there. And so it's important to really, really understand your line of questioning. Yeah. So you, you, you know, cause you're going to bring that conviction as well. 
Yeah. And let's talk about tonality for a second. And then I'm going to have yeah. you give a few examples of maybe a problem awareness or a consequence question that we've tried to use. We won't have you give away everything. We're going to give some yeah. golden nuggets for everybody listening. Um, what, is, what, is, what has changed in your tonality since going through an APQ? Um, well, tonality. Yeah. <laughs> but more important, um, timing. Yeah. Pauses. Uh. Things like that that have an impact. Yeah. Verbal but, pausing. Verbal pausing, but also just timing of your questionings. Because again, yeah. you know, like you said, these people, a lot of times they don't know the problem. They tend yeah. to get off in different directions. Yeah. So like a problem awareness question for you, and it might be different depending on what they said in situ their situation questions you ask them, but just a generic one for your industry might be, okay, so you've been using, you know, Facebook ads to, to, you know, build your business the last six years. Do you... Yeah. Do you like the results you've been getting from that? Now, what did I just do? That's a verbal pause. Verbal pause. Now, why wouldn't I go, why wouldn't I ask now? Here, tell me, everybody tell me how it sounds when I do it fast and I don't verbal pause. So you've been using Facebook ad strategy for the last six years. Do you like the results you're getting? See, that's a knee jerk question, surface level. And they're going to give me a knee jerk answer. They're going to be like, yeah, it's not bad. But if I say, so you've been using this Facebook ad strategy the last five years. Do you, do you like the results you've been getting? See how that sounds so much different, except I said the exact same words, but that little verbal pause, what does that do? It triggers the prospect to think deeper about the question I just asked, because if they don't think deeper, that means they stay surface level. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, no, I agree fully. Like for me now at this, at this, where I am, you know, with a lot of the training that I've done, it's almost like subconsciously, like, it's just, that's just how I operate. Yeah. Right. But again, it goes back to, it's one thing having that foundation. This is a very powerful foundation, but it's the main thing, you know, and you always say this is that you're, you're, you're listening. Yeah. You're not, you're not, you know, you're, 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 you're helping them get to the area that they need to get to. 100%. Now, this is, let's also talk about different things with tonality because we just talked about verbal pausing. Now, two people that really do well with verbal pausing, like public figures. And I, mm -hmm. guys, when I say this, I, I, I'm not saying politics. I just, I watch people that are in the public eye and how they communicate. I don't mm -hmm. care about politics. Everybody has their own beliefs. You know, we live in mm -hmm. free countries. You guys, everybody can believe what they want to believe. Okay. But two mm -hmm. people that are really good, that have been taught this, that you're not because you're not born with these skill sets. These are acquired skills you learn. Tony Robbins is really, really good at verbal pausing. If you guys are watching him, you've been at his events when he's walking around stage, when he walks down to the stage and, he, and he'll ask a question, and he'll pause or he'll say something and pause in the middle and then ask a question after that. And people are like, oh, my gosh, like he's just he's triggering their emotional triggers in their brain. Another person that's really good at that is is the former one of the former presidents, uh, President Obama. When you heard him speak in his speeches, whether you liked him or not, he was really good at verbal pausing. Mm -hmm. He would say something and he would just pause, and the crowd would be like, "Oh my gosh, yeah, hope and change!" And everybody's crying and everything. That is something he acquired. Somebody taught him that skill set. You're not born with that, but that's the power of even a verbal pause. Now. One thing that is really important that we teach all in our virtual training courses is the power of verbal cues. So when a prospect, you ask them a question and they're talking, instead of you sitting here going like this, and then at the end, when they stop talking, you're like, okay, interrupting. Okay, cool. That's uh, that's awesome. Uh, awesome. I like that. Well, I'm curious, John, let me ask you, that sounds scripted, but while they're talking, if I'm going, uh-huh, ah. Uh, Okay. Okay. But walk me back. See verbal cue question. See how I did a verbal cue. Ah, okay. But walk me back. See how that verbal cue leads into the next question. Now that's called bridging from question to question. When most salespeople don't know how to do that because they don't know how to bridge. They don't know how to verbal cue question. Their questions sound like an interrogation. And that's when your prospects start saying, well, hey, just get to the point. I don't have time for all these questions or just tell me how much it's going to cost. I don't have time for this because they feel like you're interrogating them because you ask them a question. 
they answer, and then you sit back and say, okay, cool, gotcha. Uh, John, let me ask you, and you sound like a scripted robot. But if I'm sitting here going like, uh-huh, oh, okay, hmm, okay, but help me understand. See, verbal cue into the question. What happened when you started to learn how to bridge like that? Well, that's how that's how humans operate, right? Like, like, like verbal cues are so powerful because, again, you're going through the flow of the conversation, not having those verbal cues. And just like you said, being quiet the whole time and then just, okay. And then that creates sales resistance. I, I many times in the past when salespeople don't even realize they do this, yeah. they just have so much to say and they want to say it. And there's no, there's no break there. It goes from zero to just interrupt. And that's the way the prospects looking at that. Yeah, so if you stay do. with them and you're engaged, which you are, that's why the verbal cue is so powerful. Yeah. In my opinion, hundred percent. It's, it's extremely powerful, and you have to be mm -hmm. taught how to acquire that skill. We teach all that in our virtual training courses, plus all the group training, right? With all of our sales trainers, me, Matt, Mark, all of our trainers in there. Hundred percent. It's a it's a game changer once you learn how to change your tone with certain questions. Because when we ask, for example, maybe a consequence question, depending on if they've been open or not would depend on if we're asking that question in a skeptical tone mm -hmm. or more of a concern tone, right? And if we don't understand that, and we're just asking a skeptical consequence question the whole time, but we should have really asked it with more empathy, we're not going to get the same emotion from that prospect to build a bigger gap because the bigger the gap, the more likely they are to buy. The smaller the gap, the more likely you are to get a ton of objections and then they don't buy, right? What, what happened when you started learning how to do that? consequences like i said for me was was big because i've i've went through those steps myself and you're absolutely right you have to you know it's it's got to be you know so typically most salespeople wouldn't go in that direction that would petrify them yeah <laughs> because they haven't earned that right to go there yeah right when you earn that right to go there that's the difference now, why do you feel most salespeople haven't earned that right to go there with the consequence question? Surface, too much surface. Because they've stayed surface level with the prospect. The entire conversation. conversation. The questions are just scripted. One question after the other, surface, surface, surface. And then you can't really ask a consequence question because you haven't earned the right to ask them a really like a really personal question, right? Correct. So like with what, with what you do, like what's a consequence question you use for your industry that we taught you? Um a lot. I mean, for, for, for me, I, I just like looking at it like very logical with that person and bringing in the emotion obviously too, but like, you know, what, you know, what does happen if you continue to keep going the way that you're going and, and nothing changes and yeah. you continue to be in this position for the next three Yeah. So months, what happens if you don't months. do anything about this and like you mentioned, nobody really knows who you are in your city because of your brand and your listings keep going down in a down economy. Like what happens at that point? So you can even specify that, right? Because now people are concerned. The economy's going down, harder to sell homes, right? So with what you do, right? So you can apply. So that's a good, really generic one that you can use for anybody, but you, you can also get very specific depending on their issues and what's going on out in the world, right? Because let's say if I sold solar, for example, it's the same thing. It doesn't matter the industry. You just apply what they've already said and what they know. So if they're concerned about their utility bills keep going up because of the high inflation of the energy cost. Okay, but what happens if you don't do anything about this? You stay with the utility company. And like you said, they keep raising your rates another 10 to 15% every single year. Like, how would you pay for the bill at that point? See, that's an individual specified consequence question. And we teach you guys all that in our virtual training course, like how to apply what you sell to that framework. All right. Now, Scott, this has been a very unique interview. Yes, sir. Yeah. What was your, let's, let's end it with this. Cause we gave them a few nibbles, you know, on some different things. Um, what, how did you use to try to close a sale before any PQ? Um, I, th I think a lot of times just pushing that product. What would right? you say? I, like, I, you I the think red one or the blue one? Yeah. Want? Yeah. I mean, I, I think I was, I, I think I had a little bit more in depth than that 
you know, but I, I think, um, you know, I, I, for me, like I said, I mean, I, I, I don't like tackling objections. If objections come up at this point, the way I do what I do, I mean, it's, it's very logistical for me. Yeah, They're more concerned. Right. So in the past, like, you know, you would go over these objections and you're just, and again, it's, it's, you're missing the entire point because if you don't create that self urgency from then, from that, from, for them, then, I mean, what do you, what are you really doing? We're just going to go back and forth all day. Yeah. And then you right. have to go so, into chase mode. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's, you know, it's, it's just going through the entire process. And like I said, there are steps to any PQ. Yeah. It's they're, one they're, thing getting the foundation right, but it's another thing you could, there's a whole well, different level. I think, I think some people think like, oh, I can get some, some free, you know, things that Jeremy talks about in his live and then I'm going to sell and I'm going to make three times as much money. But if you don't like, I want to make sure everybody understands NEPQ is like a hundred thousand piece puzzle. Yeah. And yeah. in our lives and little things that we do here, we give you like one piece out of a hundred thousand. Yeah. So if you don't understand the structure from taking a prospect all the way from connecting questions to situation questions, to problem awareness, to solution awareness, to consequence, to transition into the next step. Now, if you're a one call close person, B2C, transition into your presentation and then the close. If you're more of a B2B type of salesperson, your next step might be after a consequence questions to book a demo, to book a proposal, to book another call with their board, whatever your next step is. And if you don't understand those questions in and out backwards and forwards, like our clients do who sell the same thing you guys do in your industries, then you're quite literally losing sales that our clients make every single day who are in the same damn industry as you guys are. OK, Scott, any last words of advice you'd give to somebody that's brand new to sales or maybe even a vet that's in? Yeah, your uh, well, yeah, that would be really good. I think, um, you know, I think applying any PQ, being new to any PQ, I think I, I, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to overlook anything like even applying any PQ. You're going to see instant results because you have a strong. But we're, we're talking about once you adapt your because this is a skill set and you are training and you're we're talking about the top people in the industry yeah like we're talking about the top one i believe i'm the best at what i do sure right you but based your- on the hard work i've put in and the support i get right so it's very important to understand that like where where this is talking about being consistent at what you do you're only going to be consistent at what you do with the right skill set and and applying what you're learning now, I have right. to ask this question because I always know if we've done our job, if we're doing our job, does your spouse like us since we've helped you go from 140 grand a year to 350,000 a year in commissions? Yes. Okay. As long, <laughs> as, as long as the spouse is on board and they're okay with more than doubling or tripling the income, then we know we're doing something right for them. Well, well I didn't get my spouse involved when I, when I signed up because I make my own decisions, but that's just me. Yeah. That's just me. Well, you made a good decision. <laughs> Smart. All right, perfect. Hey, Scott, thanks for being on here. You're the man. We appreciate you. Uh, well done. Congratulations on your result. And the cool thing is, is that you're still learning. You know, Always. what you've learned so far has gotten you up to 30 grand a month in commissions. You've even had some month where you've gone over 40, but you're consistently around that 30 mark. But look, three months from now, you'll probably be consistently averaging 35, 36. Six, seven months from now, you'll probably be consistently averaging 40, 45, right? Yeah. So as you keep learning and keep tweaking, you just sell more of uh, maybe the same prospects that you might miss here and there. Now you're able to scoop up more of them as you, as you keep learning. So it's, it's a, can, you know, as my good friend Bradley always says is training something you did or is training something you do. Yeah. If you want to be a top 1% earning salesperson in your industry, like Scott is in his training is something you do daily. If you want to make a lot of money. Now, if you don't like money, if you just want to work a bunch of hours and hit your head against the brick wall and not make very much, then you don't have to do any training, right? It's a free world out there. Scott, thanks for being on here. Now, look, guys, if you're on here, we give you little nibbles on these. If you're on this live on YouTube or LinkedIn or our Facebook group, Sales Revolution, our Facebook business page, or even my Facebook, you want to start acquiring the same skills that Scott and really tens of thousands of our clients have done at this point. Uh, you want to start making 10 grand a month consistently in your industry, or let's say you want to start making 15 or 20 
or 30 or even 40 grand every single month in exactly the same industry you're in right now. Because I can assure you, we are training salespeople and companies in your industry watching us right now that are making two, three, four, five times what you are that sell the exact same thing, same industry. Okay. There's no, is there any difference? Are you different than them? Do they comb their hair every morning? Do they brush their teeth? Do they drink water? Do they eat food? Do they have kids? Do they have issues and trials and tribulations? Yes. There's no difference. The only difference is, is they've acquired skills that work with human behavior, whereas you're still using skills that you've been forced to learn. It's not your fault that actually work against human behavior. And that's why you're triggering so many objections. It's not your fault. You were forced to learn those. So if you want the opportunity to actually acquire skills that work with human behavior like Scott does and thousands of others, message me directly right now. So if you're on LinkedIn, message me directly right now. If you're in our Facebook group, Sales Revolution, or the Facebook business page, or my Facebook, message me directly right now. If you don't know how to message me, then just post hashtag NEPQ, hashtag NEPQ, and either myself or someone on our team, one of my stunt doubles, will message you back directly with some different training options. You're even welcome to book a call with one of our team members that will go over all the different options we have for your specific industry uh, so you can make that type of money as well. Scott Holiday, you're the myth, the man, the legend, and can't wait to see you keep making more money. Good job. Thanks, keep, Jeremy. You make more money, your prospects do better, right? Uh, 100%. 100%. All right, guys. Thanks, everybody. I probably will go live tomorrow with the Q&A. We will post about that in the morning. Scott, you're the man. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day. Take care.